Hi guys and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with Rangers. I'm going to be taking on Dundee just now at Dens Park in the Scottish Cup. Without further ado, let's just dive right in today. Beat them nine times, they've beaten us twice and there's been two draws. Robin McCrory sadly is cup-tied at the moment. Liam Kelly can come onto the bench. Andy Gilmore also cup-tied. Um, I suppose Cataldi can come onto the bench for him. Uh, in terms of the squad, Houston won't be at right-back anymore. Uh, pretty much made that decision last episode that we don't want him to be playing there again actually because he's don't really think he can do it anymore now that he's been trained more as a winger um, in terms of who we want to be playing today I suppose we'll start Odson Edward other than that um, we'll start Gallagher for Horta other than that we'll go with an unchanged side so we'll be going with Fulton, Byram, Fernandez, Wallace, Borthwick, Jackson, McGinn, Burjonas, Houston, Gallagher, Afif, and Odson, Edward. Uh, we lack a little bit of cover on the bench defensively today, but there's not really a lot we can do about it, sadly. I suppose we could bring Gamboa on to the bench. Yeah, I suppose so. We'll do that instead of O'Halloran. So Gamboa can come on to the bench. So that will leave us with uh, the same lineup. Obviously, the bench now of Kelly, Mitchell, Gamboa, Horta, Cataldi, Pedence, and Morelos. Scottish Cup, of course, competition that we've won every single season. So we want to keep that going assertively. We should be winning this without any problem at all. And we obviously want to bounce back after a horror performance against Falkirk. So we'll tell them to push forward right from the off. But Jonas goes back to Ivanildo Fernandez now. Start the game off in possession. Hopefully we can get forward early. Uh, we obviously have done there. Scott Bain has the, the ball in his gloves. Kicks it long for McCauley. It should be uh, Murray Wallace's. It is indeed good strength from Wallace. He's a thief now looking for Edward. Takes it down nicely. Move it out to Houston. Come on, Odson. Out to Jordan Houston. Pings it in. Gallagher flicks it on. A thief is there. And it's Akram Afif with the assist from Tim Gallagher early on. Praise be. Fantastic start for Rangers, and it's 1-0 already at Dens Park. Beautiful, lovely flick as well from Tim Gallagher there on uh, Houston's pinged ball in. Here's Byram, let's lay down a beating on these today. It's in for Edward, who doesn't win the header, but it will be picked up. Borthwick Jackson to Burjonas quickly. Gallagher now. Houston has an overlap out wide. Byram, can he angle it in? Puts it in. Edward attacks, takes a touch. It's cleared, canning off it over on falls to a thief. That's a terrible miss from Akram Afif, who should have two already. And Dundee trying to get forward really quick now, but it's a terrible pass. Fernandez picking it up. Come on, let's go get a second. <clears throat> if we can get a second really quickly, then I make it I make it a really bad day for Dundee ahead. If we can score quickly and make it 2 now, it could be an avalanche of goals. But if we miss a good couple of chances, it does let them uh, back in it. Gallagher out wide for a thief now. Looking to cross. Beats a man. And it goes. Edward rises. Flicks it. Houston at the back stick. There it is. 2-0. 13 and a half minutes. Lovely from Jordan Houston. Nice assist with a flick on from Odson Edward there. And let's, let's keep pressing here. Let's go and absolutely annihilate them today. Oh, as we say that, Gandhi with a free kick. Hits it well over. Touches the bar on its way over. <clears throat> and he enjoying a bit of possession now actually it's into Gandhi moving it quickly to Kerr closed down by a thief has an easy ball to Smith though Borthwick Jackson closing him down oh he dives in and gets beat Smith to Baxter tries to play it in for McCauley who does get away from Fernandez, and it's Glenn McCauley it is 2-1 not good man terrible defending and it looked far too easy for him to sweep it beyond the goalkeeper there as well Need to do better. Corner now, McGinn pings it in. It's not a good one. It'll be picked up probably by McCauley. Here it is indeed. Glenn McCauley leading the break for Dundee. Don't you dare let them back at 2-2. That's a terrible pass. Byram to Burjonas now. Murray Wallace, Borthwick Jackson. Looks for a thief. Good ball. Gallagher, good ball again. Slips it inside. Edward takes a touch. Got a man running on him again. Oh, he hits it too early, McGinn. <sighs> Should have took a touch there, John McGinn. Should have set himself and went across Scott Bain. 
and we have squandered a number of chances now we're letting them back into this uh, don't see much coming from this here Wallace for Jonas pings it over the top a FIFA actually with a huge chance a FIFA scores I thought the danger had went there when uh, Bain saved from McGinn, but clearly not. A lovely ball from Barjonas and a lovely finish from Afif, who at this point actually should have a hat-trick. Nonetheless, 3-1. Bit more comfortable. I was uh, I was worried, to be honest, that Macaulay goal was going to spur Dundee back into this game, especially since statistically they've not done badly. So it is a relief to get that third goal. Gandhi plays it to Hall. Come on, somebody close them down here. There you go, closed down by Gallagher, but Edward can't keep it from Hall. Spence to Gandhi now. Closed down again by Gallagher. Goes uh, such a decent ball out to the left. Goes all the way back to Scott Bain. Out to Waddle now. Dundee taking their time on the ball. Being closed down pretty well now, actually. Bain launching it easy for Byram to flick it, but he flicks it right for Macaulay. That's terrible from Sam Byram. Has to direct that header better. It's into Baxter now. Josie Baxter out wide for Freer. Byron wins it well. Can Houston? No, Houston can't beat Hall to it. McGinn robs it though from Spence. Edward now for Houston. Here we go. Go on, Jordan. Use your pace. Needs to get a good ball in here. Waits for support. Forced a little wide now. Cuts it back for Byron. He angles it in. It's a good deep ball. A thief for the hat trick. There it is. Akram a thief. A lovely point blank header for the hat trick. It was a tricky angle as well. He snuck it in really well. Good cross from Byram, of course, but a lovely header from Afif. And there's his hat trick. Showing a bit of determination to hold off Haksabanovic and obviously the new boy Shea Ojo from stealing his spot there. And it's a good half. 4 1 at half time. You can't really argue with that. Make a couple of changes now. Uh, let's just say we're very pleased, of course. Uh, we will change Jordan Houston for Daniel Podence. We will bring on Dimitri Mitchell for Akram Afif. He already has a hat trick. It's job done. Might as well give Mitchell a wee run out. Mitchell, one of those players where I think he's probably going to see his time at the club coming to an end at some point in the near future. He's done well. He's a useful player, but I think we're going to get to that point where we just need a bit more quality. You know, even our backup players are going to need to be uh, of a higher quality. But I still like the boy. He contributed well, so we'll give him a couple of games here and there when we can. Scott Bain will bowl this out, you'd imagine, for Dundee. Probably to number 19 there. Does indeed. Waddle and Hall. Way over the top for Macaulay, who's in on the defenders again and shoots. And Oh, it's just over. I thought he'd scored again there. It's poor defending by... Fernandez and Wallace letting him in there like that easily and with just the 20 minutes left we're going to throw on Danilo Cataldi who's lacking a little bit of match fitness now he can come on for McGinn as Ian Fulton goes deep it's away by Wallace Gallagher flicking it on though easy for Hall away for Jonas Holds it nicely. McGinn moves it quickly for Mitchell. That's a good ball. Can Mitchell cross for Onsen Edward? He crosses. Hall flicks it away. McGinn. Pedence. Tees up Tim Gallagher. Ah, oh, just wide. It's a shame Pedence could have used an assist. And it would have been nice for young Gallagher to get himself on the score sheet. But overall, a very confident performance from the boys here at Dens Park. It's not always an easy place to come. So very pleased to get an emphatic score here. It's Gallagher on the edge of the box. Tees up Cataldi. Takes a touch. Turns. Smashes it just over the bar. We know he's got a long range shot in him. He's got a, a, a thunderbolt of a goal in him. But just not to be that time. And I'd imagine Dundee are probably going to escape here. With the half time score line of 4-1. Which probably flatters them a little bit to, uh, in truth. <clears throat> hopefully Tim Gallagher can continue to impress he's played very well today uh, he's had a couple of stinkers here and there when we've, when we've tried him out but obviously he's a young guy still developing so that's to be expected Swallowed for Pedence now Daniel Pedence squares it oh Waddle just gets it away from Edward and yeah as I say I think Dundee 
will escape with a 4-1 scoreline with a couple of chances actually we've squandered a little bit McGinn obviously earlier on had a chance that he squandered a bit Gallagher probably should have scored when he was teed up by Pudens a thief could have another one he probably missed his easiest chance of the day actually um, but we'll let him away with it since he did score that hat-trick Mitchell here can he put a good ball in nah it's way over hit Wallace gets red and that is full time so we're through in the Scottish Cup again the lads really like this competition, passionately, very, very happy. We did so well today, um, especially not to buckle when Macaulay did score that goal to make it 2-1. And the quarter-final draw be made today. Let's hope we get an Ibrox tie. Hamilton will play Kilmarnock. Aberdeen or Falkirk hosting Celtic or Queen of the South. Rangers at Ibrox will host Hearts and Annan or Partick will host Dundee United. So... Hearts, a, a trickier team than we perhaps would have liked, but at the end of the day, we are at Ibrox and we should expect to beat anybody at Ibrox. Speaking of beating teams at Ibrox, hopefully that's what we're going to do in a moment when we take on Air United, bottom of the table now. Uh, we don't want to see them go down, but we'd much rather hammer them uh, and consign them to relegation than slip up. <clears throat> Marseille 4-0 over Ajax there in the Champions League. Marseille clearly returning to to strength there. Uh, Man City beat Dortmund 2-1. So hopefully Celtic go out to Queen of the South and we don't have to face them for the Cup. I know it adds a little bit extra to the Cup when we beat them in it, like when we beat them in the final um, two seasons ago now, I think it was, we beat them in the final. So that was, that was nice. But I'd still rather just win the cup. I don't care if we beat them or not. I don't care if we beat them in a crushing 5-0 victory at Parkhead. Or if they go out 1-0 away at Annan. I really don't care. As long as we win the cup. That's all that matters to me. And our youth side have been defeated by Celta Vigo. In the UEFA Youth League first knockout round. So it's good for those boys getting some exposure at that level. Uh, UV 2-0 over Barca is interesting. Bilbao 1-1 with Spurs. I thought perhaps some of the replays in the cup might, might have happened before these games here. Celtic beating Park Salonica 3-0 there. That's good for the coefficient. It's good to see them doing well in, in the Europa League. Of course, they've got massive fixture congestion coming up now with that cup game. And then there's they've got league games. They've got the Europa League as well. And they've also got the cup replay as well now because they drew that cup game. So massive fixture congestion for Celtic. Hopefully that makes them slip up in the league. Dundee United, St. Johnson, you'd expect a victory. No, no victory for the Tannadice side. St. Johnson slowly but surely trying to claw their way out of that playoff spot. I think this is a chance for us to go 13 clear of Celtic again before they play. They must be a, they must be a Sunday game, I'd think, with them being in the Europa League as well. Let's have a little look. Uh, yeah, they're away at Hamilton tomorrow. So, three times we've played air, three times we've beat them. I'm tempted to go with the same side. Uh, although we'll put Gilmore on the bench instead of Gamboa. We'll put Robbie McCrory on the bench instead of Liam Kelly. Other than that, I think it's hard to deny the side that just went and battered Dundee. So, it'll be Fulton, Byram, Fernandez, Wallace, Borthwick, Jackson, McGinber, Jonas, Houston, Gallagher, Afif, and Odson, Edward. Let's just continue on with that team. Make sure we get the three points here. Who's this young lad? David Patterson. He looks okay, actually. Young 17 year old at air. Who wants him? He's wanted by Stoke. He probably is a bit alright then if Stoke want him. Uh, and obviously, young Stuart Nickers on loan from Celtic. That's right, we checked him out before. So, as always, calmly, expect nothing but a win. Murray Wallace is motivated. Let's just go out, do the business. Mackay, Kildee, Patterson. I think we probably want to be playing um, the young wonder kids up top a couple of games coming up as well. Give them some run runs in the team. We're just looking just now to keep it relatively consistent with the teams we've been playing all season. We don't want to throw all these new faces in. You've seen we tried it before and it was a bit of a mess. So 
I'm just wary of, of, of putting too many untested elements into the side at one time. Uh, Fernandez to a thief now. Hodgson Edward now, who deserves another game after playing well last time out. That's why he remains in the side. Byron picking it up now. Angles one in towards Hodgson Edward. It's a lovely header, well attacked by Hodgson Edward. And it's 1 0 to Rangers. It's taken a bit longer actually than I thought it would. Uh, nearly half an hour gone already, but Sam Byron with another excellent cross. He's actually playing pretty well now. He needs to. He's a, a wee bit of a hiccup actually mid season, so it's good to see him playing well again. Lovely flick from a thief to Gallagher, who keeps it simple. Edward holds it up, reverses it from again, takes a touch, sets himself, and drags the shot poorly wide. And we're absolutely dominating the game here. Nearly 70% possession, 6-0 in the shot count, but it's still only 1-0. And you never know at 1-0, so let's let's get another one here, please, guys. Houston's playing poorly with a 6.5, as is McGinn. Edward over the free kick, bit of a strange one. Headed away by Mackay, should be picked up. Yep, Fernandez easily there. You know, you've got help inside there. Nope, goes outside for McGinn. Well picked up. Can McGinn provide a cross now from the byline? Hangs it in the air. Gallagher's there, nods it down. It deflects around. Kilday clears. Should be dealt with. Fernandez heads it away again. Well done, actually, to head it out wide to Byram there. Who angles across in early. Odson Edward jumps. This time he can't get it. Houston squares it. Odson Edward, though, on the floor from Jordan Houston. Edward sweeps it beyond Laidlaw. 2 0 Rangers. And good performance, Odson Edward again. There's Borthwick Jackson's throw. Let's make it 3 0. We'll throw on uh, Gilmore at half time. Gallagher angles one in. Away by Walters. McGinn racing back to pick it up. Come on, let's get the third here. McGinn forward for Houston. Put another ball in, Houston. Get Edward his hat trick. It's in. It's Edward. It's a flick and it's hit the frame of the goal. It's back to Edward. And there you go. First half hat trick for Odson Edward. Just what a thief did last time out. Excellent. It's number 10 for the season for Edward. Good for him. It's good. decent numbers hitting double figures when you're not the main man. But Jonas now, we could even make it four. It's angled across everybody. Kaldé gets it away well. Flynn picking it up. Oh, poor though. And it's squared to Edward. And how does he miss? <laughs> Probably his easiest chance. And he's missed it just like a thief actually in the last game out. Scores three uh, and misses his easiest chance. But with 69% possession and 11 shots to airs none. We've been an absolutely irresistible force in the first half. Exactly what we wanted to see. Very happy with the way we're playing. We're obviously going to make a couple of changes. We'll bring in Andy Gilmore for Ivanildo Fernandez, and we're also going to bring on hmm, who else can play up top? Pedence can kind of do it. Nah, we'll go with Morelos. See if Morelos can bag himself a couple of goals today as well. He is relatively close to that 30 goal mark, Alfredo Morelos. Laidlaw long. Fief picks it up now. Into Burjonas, you've got McGinn there, lovely. Just keeps it from Crawford, no more. McGinn forward, Morelos. Back the way to Gilmore. And Burjonas, McGinn. That's a terrible ball from McGinn. Kilday though with a poor back pass. Morelos has missed. It's a bit of a sitter from Morelos. That's Morelos and Edward both missed some pretty easy chances. Uh, one obviously there for Morelos and the one just before half time for Edward. And this could be even uglier than it is right now for here. Uh, we're going to make a change. We're going to bring on, uh, what is it, Podence for Jordan Houston. He does like being the supporting winger. He does indeed. For Jonas's delivery, Tim Gallagher rises. It's Murray Wallace sweeping it home. Tim Gallagher gets the assist. A nice flick on with his head. Murray Wallace sweeps it beyond Laidlaw very well. And that gives you 4 nothing to Rangers. Gallagher now, here we come again. Can we make it even worse? A thief's in behind, squares it away by Nichols, picked up by Borthwick Jackson, who's tracking back. Who's been a really low-key, good performer this season. We can really trust him in there at left-back. Picking him up for free was great business. Uh, Gallagher for McGinn holds it. Gallagher again. Hit a dig, son. Hits a dig. Oh, it's in. It's Tim Gallagher, who still looks about four years old. Look how young he looks. That's ludicrous. Uh, how tall is he? He's 184, jumping a 13. So he, 
he wins quite a lot of headers. Um, he's not a short guy, but he's not particularly huge either, so he does well to win those headers. And Ayr still yet to register a shot as Pedence sends this one into the box. Gallagher wins another header. Uh, Laidlaw just catches it. You would think that won't be the purpose of this highlight because that was never going to trouble the goalkeeper. Laidlaw launching it deep towards O'Brien who can take it down as Ayr look for their first shot. McGinn pinches it but Flynn can play it in behind. Craig Moore is in. Moore shoots and it's in. Of course it is. Craig Moore, Ayr's first shot of the day. And it is 5-1. Nobody really cares apart from uh, Ian Fulton who will be raging. With 10 minutes to go, probably going to be a 5-1 full-time scoreline. Dundee get battered 5-0 at Easter Road there after getting battered 4-1 at Dens by us. Suggests that that's a... a poor bit of form that they're in at the moment here's Daniel Podence into McGinn Podence hasn't really impressed uh, since joining Morelos losing it Morelos also didn't manage to get himself a goal Wallace and Gallagher the two who managed to bag goals in the second half obviously adding to Odson Edwards first half hat trick that's lovely play there Byron picks it up and it is full time it's 5-1 it's pretty much the scoreline you'd expect when we take on Air United, punching way above their weight being up here in the Premiership. But a good performance. So all that's really left to do in this episode is see how Celtic get on at New Douglas Park against Hamilton. It could be a tricky one away at Hamilton. Uh, any of the loanies standing out today? Nah, seven for Gareth Harris is okay. But let's just get that Celtic score. Hopefully Hamilton can do something to them. Hamilton are way down in ninth though, so I wouldn't uh, wouldn't hold our breath. Uh, two 0 Celtic, so that brings the gap back to ten. There's eleven games left to play, and the gap is of course ten points. So that means what? Eight more wins, and we've secured the title. So here's hoping, and that's if Celtic don't drop any more points as well. Uh, Mabudi didn't play as much there. How much is he playing now, Dapo Mabudi? Uh, he's played 80, he started 18 games, come off the bench for 6, so he's getting a decent amount of playtime, but training kind of poorly this season, which is a damn shame. Uh, anyway, that is going to do it for this episode, a good rebound from that horror show against Falkirk. Uh, once again, no clean sheet though, that makes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that makes 6 games in a row uh, with no clean sheet, which is a concern, but as long as we're banging in lots of goals as we did this episode, I won't, um, I won't fret over it too much. Nine goals scored, two conceded. Nice confident win away at Dundee and home to Ayr. Leaves us, as I say, 10 clean of Celtic. And next time out, we'll be hoping to extend that when we take on St Johnson at McDermott Park. And then we have that quarter final of the Scottish Cup at Hamden against Hearts. So I hope you'll join us for that one. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have done, please drop down below and leave a like on the video. In terms of the subscriber count, I don't want to seem like a YouTube whore, but if you're somebody that does watch the videos all the time and you've just not clicked that button, get it clicked. Let's try and get that number up a little bit. As I say, I don't personally really care, but YouTube seems to care about these numbers, so if we could get it up, that'd be magic. But mostly, just thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time when we're taking on St. Johnson and Hearts.